The reality is that I can have many thoughts in my mind and you are able to hear them. Have you ever tried that? Have you ever experimented with that with somebody? It's, it's worth experimenting with somebody about it. Here's a good experiment to engage. Have yourself and a person who you don't know very well sit next to you or stand next to you and you just focus on allowing yourself to feel your own thoughts and to, and to actually think your thought and just have one thought over and over and over again. When that happens, um, there is this energy that comes out of you that anybody who is sensitive to it can pick up. Does that make sense? And they can actually feel the actual thought that you had and it, interpret it into words, into language and express your thought. And it's worth experimenting with. Now, one thing that's easier than that though, if you think about it, is when a person has a feeling at you. Have you noticed that it's a lot easier to feel a person's feelings about you than it is to read their thoughts about you? You notice that? So that tells you that your soul is really attuned not so much to thoughts but to feelings. So it's attuned to how people feel about you and how you feel about others. Now, if you can think of your soul as your heart, in other words, a, a part of you where you've got to actually feel it before it comes out of you. So, that, so we call that our soul. When I have a feeling in my heart towards another person, usually that feeling is written all over my face, isn't it? If it's a sincere feeling. You often see the feeling in the person's face. But you can actually feel it as an emotion coming out of them towards you. Have you noticed that? So we all, we all are fairly good with that when it comes to somebody being angry with us. Uh, most of us can interpret anger pretty accurately when it's coming out of us. But there are other emotions that we're not so sensitive to. Sort of emotions that are more um, what you would call refined or that require greater sensitivity before we can actually feel them. Is that not true? So when somebody feels ashamed, do you notice when they feel ashamed? And sometimes it, it, if it's a really strong shame, you might notice, mightn't you? But if, it, if it's not a very powerful shame that they have, you might not even notice it when they are in a discussion with you. And if I am completely blocked inside of myself to any shame inside of me, can you see how that would also then block me to the experience of shame that another person may have inside of them? And therefore make me less sensitive to their feeling of shame that they are actually experiencing. But as a part of that discussion, you can see that if I have a feeling coming from my heart, from, let's call it our soul or our heart, it is very easy for most people, particularly if that feeling is very strong, it's very easy for most people to feel it that are around me. Any person who sees me or connects me with me in any way will probably be able to feel that emotion. Now, for most people, we require our sight to be engaged before we feel, unfortunately. Have you noticed that? Like, you have this strange sensation and then you look at somebody and then you realise why you have the strange sensation because I've got a feeling being projected at you, you that you like or you don't like and you instantly feel that. Does that make sense for most of you? If you've had those experiences where you've, you feel like you're being looked at, have you ever had that experience where you feel like you're being looked at by somebody and then all of a sudden you make eye contact with the person you've, you've been and now you know the feeling they're projecting at you, right? And sometimes it could be pleasant or sometimes it might be quite unpleasant. It just depends on what the feeling is. But we now feel engaged with the individual. So obviously we are very sensitive with regard to our soul in the sense of we're able to sense feelings and emotions that are projected at us individually in particular. Now obviously this method of communication that we have is very powerful because if you think about it, if a person is just verbalising words towards us 
and they enter the air and the atmosphere and then they get transmitted into compression waves and then they enter the hearing of us. These words would just enter us, enter our hearing. And then as, uh, as we have been programmed into a specific type of language in the particular country that we live in, we interpret these words as thoughts that are being projected at us. But have you noticed that every one of these words generally also have feelings associated with them that when we engage the person we can actually feel their feelings? So when somebody says to us, you're a bastard, right? If they've got a smile on their face and a feeling that you know, they love you at the same time, which often people in Australia have a sort of a... We often name people certain things while at the same time feeling quite nice about them. And we interpret their feeling rather than their words, don't we? And as a result, the, the words mean far less than the feelings. Can you see that? But if somebody says you're a bastard and he's got all this rage and all this like really angry emotions towards you, now you're interpreting it quite different, aren't you? Because of all of the emotion that you feel along with the word that's, words that are being spoken. But the problem with words is that you can say a heap of words and it can enter the mind of the person and the person can interpret them differently in their heart because of their own personal experience. That's the problem with words, isn't it? So a person can transmit words to us and say, oh, this, that, this, that, without any negative emotion, and yet there might be some association inside of us between those words and something that happened in my own childhood or something that engages a whole heap of emotion that's quite negative inside of me and that causes me to interpret something completely different to what the person has actually said. So the true power of our soul is not the words. It is actually the emotion that is transmitted between two people that it has the power. That's the thing that we even base our entire interpretation of. Unfortunately though, we also have emotion inside of each of us individually that causes to mis us to misinterpret emotion. In other words, we go through this process of having feelings that maybe didn't come from the person but rather there was feelings they had for us that caused us to feel certain emotions. So for example, many times a person can be loved and at the same time feel not loved but feel ashamed because, because the love coming at them makes them feel unworthy of that love somehow because of some past events or whatever that they have not yet released and instead of feeling loved they feel ashamed of themselves or unworthy that's the effect that emotion can also have so if we summarize that in terms of what's happening inside of the soul we can say that inside of the soul of mine I have emotions that are going to interpret and our emotions would include also desires, passions, let's call them longings. And I have the ability to feel these emotions, but I also have the ability to feel those emotions projected from another person to me. In other words, from a, a source outside of myself. So others. I can feel the emotions and the emotion projected at me causes me to feel certain things necessarily. When I say causes it resonates with different emotions or experiences that I have had and then causes me to interpret certain things based on the interaction. Okay. So for example if you go to America and call someone a bastard with a smile on your face there's a high likelihood you'll get a smack in the face. Right? Because they're not have the, they haven't had the same background as we have here in Australia with the same kind of interpretation of that kind of emotion with that statement. Does that make sense? And so they often would feel angry instead of just smiling it off or laughing or whatever along with us. Right? Now that being the case, if our relationship with God is such that it refines everything, which it is, there must be a way for me 
to actually, and there, there is obviously a way for me to feel God's emotions for me. That make sense? If I can feel your emotions and you can feel my emotions, it would make sense that God can feel both of our emotions, wouldn't it? Yeah. But also, God has emotions that come from God to us that we're able to feel. 